Hello there and very much welcome to this short introduction video to the reference designation system. In this video we'll take a look at why we need a naming system, what is important, some needs to have and some nice to have, and finally the solution to our conundrum. So without further ado, please join me. First of all, why do we need a naming system? And for this we can take a look at the daily complexity that an everyday person faces. So for example, here we have a bike. If I were to ask you, please take a look at this bike and locate the front wheel or the saddle, you would have no issue. And that's because everybody knows what a front wheel refers to and where it is. However, that is unfortunately not the daily complexity that an engineer faces. Their world might look something like this. So this is a hydropower plant. It takes stored potential energy in the water and turns it into electrical energy. If I were to ask you now, please take a look here and find the big green bell. You would look like a question mark, and rightfully so, because big green bell does not real, uh, really mean anything. It does not really mean anything to an IT system and not to a human. You will not know where to start looking, and you could not associate any data to this, uh, this name. If we take a look at a system which involves human safety, for example an aircraft, it is tremendously important to gather and collect data about components, when were they last maintained, what are their design requirements, and so on. So for this, we definitely need an unambiguous naming system. All right, let's take a look at uh, the daily life of an engineer. So here we have a plant, and in here we find some valves, as we see here in this picture. Let's try to translate that into a diagram. So now we have a P and ID, as you see here. Each symbol here means a valve, and we have the flow lines in between them. These valve needs an unambiguous name. So let's try to think of something. Let's try to think of the most straightforward thing. Let's just call them valve one, two, three, and so on. Enumerate upwards. This might work for some time. However, designs might change. And for some reason or another, we might need to add a valve. For example, here. What should we call this one? We cannot call it valve 3 because that name is already taken. So now we start calling it valve 1b instead. And now the numbering loosens its meaning. So the numbers doesn't really work. Furthermore, if another engineer comes along, they might also start ca calling the valves valve 1, 2, 3 and so on. And suddenly we have ambiguity. One name leads to two different kinds of valves and that's a no-go. So this system doesn't work. Let's try to think of something else. Let's try to think of the most unambiguous thing that we can. Just uh, randomly generate numbers, unique numbers, and associate each number to a component. Now we have unambiguity, but I have lost all sense of navigability. I cannot find anything in the real world because this number does not mean anything. If I want to find a valve, I will have no idea if I'm close to it or I'm the completely different section of the plant. So this also doesn't work. All right, let's try to combine the different uh, kinds of naming systems. Let's try to take both something that has navigability and something that uh, adds unambiguousness. Now we have two kinds of naming system combined into one, and that means that we actually have a mess here. Different kinds of engineers cannot agree on what's important in the valves. So somebody thinks that the color is important, for example, green valve, and other things that uh, the fact that it's a ball valve is important. So that also doesn't work. All right, so designing a naming system clearly isn't that easy. So let's try to take a, a step back and look at some needs to have and some nice to have. So on the need to have side, we definitely need it to be unambiguous. That's the whole reason why we want to design a naming system in the first place. So one name needs to point to only one component. We also need to be able to navigate in it. And that means finding the components in real life. So the names uh, needs to mean something so I know how close I am to my components when we need to maintain them. And we also need to work cross industry. So that means if my organization covers different kinds of sectors, we do not need to have different kinds of standards and different kinds of uh, naming pr principles for each and every sector. We need one standard to cover everything. On the nice to have side, it would be nice if it was easy to learn. So that means we can easily onboard new engineers and they find themselves at home with the standard quite quickly. It would be nice if there was no licensing fees. So we do not need to pay some kind of yearly 
fees to use this naming system. And lastly, it would be nice if it was updated regularly. So as technology changes, the uh, standard also is updated to cover these new technologies. So actually, there already is such a standard out there that solves our problems. It's called the Reference Designation System. It's an ISO and IEC standard, and its official name is the ISO IEC 81346 standard series. So how does this standard work? We want to teach you that in three easy steps. So step number one, I want to teach you how to structure things and how classification works in this standard. Step number two is aspects and how to view the same system with multiple points of view. And lastly, step number three, that is best practices within uh, the industry. So without further ado, please join me in the next video.